Hello and welcome to another fabulous quick crop video. Well, today we're looking at an alternative weeding method for your paths and driveways. And we're going to be looking at this rather attractive Orange Sheen X300 flame gun. Over the last few years, there has been a considerable backlash against spraying weed killer, both for its environmental impact and now it would appear on our own health. Now, what's the most eco-friendly way of weeding? Well, it's going to be using a trowel or a hoe like this, but if you don't have enough time, what are our other options? Well, in organic growing, the most common way of controlling weeds is using a flame weeder which controls your annual or perennial weeds with a burner of various types. And this is where the Sheen X300 comes in. So this is a home flame gun solution. It runs on kerosene, which is the same heating oil that you will have in most people's central heating systems. And as you will see in a minute, it's pretty easy to use and is an effective weed control method. So before we have a test run outside, I'm just going to look at the flamethrower itself and I'm going to give you the quick one, two, three on how it works. So this big orange part here, well, that's obviously the fuel tank. And as I said, it's filled with kerosene or paraffin. It's, it's the same thing. It's recommended that the fuel tank is filled to about two thirds full and leaving a little bit of an air space at the top. And that accounts to about three litres. We pressurise the tank using this hand pump here and that delivers the fuel to the burner on the other end via this pipe here. And if we want to check the pressure in our tank we just look at our uh, pressure gauge here on the top and then the fuel is controlled or shut off using this valve. So the fuel is then routed through this coil here which is heated by the flame passing through the centre and that actually vaporises the liquid paraffin which is then forced back to the jet here where it's ignited and then passes out the front of the burner in a 500 degree flame. And then also in the bottom of the burner here we have a rectangular wick and that is used for starting the flame gun. So that's enough of this waffle. Uh, let's get this baby fired up. Now, rather than spoiling a brand new unit here, which I can maybe sell to one of you guys, I'm gonna swap it out for my three-year-old sheen, oops, that I have under the bench here. You can see we've got a little bit of discoloration on the burner here from the heat, but other than that, it's showing very few signs of wear. I've already filled this two thirds full with my kerosene, so let's get outside and burn some weeds. When you're starting your flamethrower, make sure you're in an open area away from flammable objects, obviously. So the first thing we do is we want to pressurize the tank a little bit. So I'm just going to give the hand pump a couple of pumps, just maybe five bar of pressure. I'm then turning on the valve here, just about half a turn. And I'm leaving it on for, I suppose, about 10 seconds. And that's basically soaking the wick here. And that's what we're going to use to light the burner. I use one of these long-nosed little kitchen lighters here uh, just because it's handy. I think it's better really to light the burner from the back. It's not going to shoot flame out at this stage uh, when, it, when it's cool, but just for safety's sake. So I'm just going to click it in here. Okay, and that's our wick lit. There will be enough fuel on the wick to heat the coil sufficiently for the fuel to vaporise. As the fuel heats up, the burner will emit a longer and more dramatic flame than normal, but this will settle down when the fuel has vaporised and is nothing to worry about. Don't be tempted to turn the fuel back on at this stage or the large flame will persist for a longer time. So we can see now that the flamethrower is just starting to make its roaring sound there. I'm now, no, it's hot enough and I'm going to turn the fuel back on. So I'm turning it on about a half turn and we can see the flamethrower really getting going now and getting up to speed. The next thing we need to do at this stage then is to pump the tank up and the recommended pressure is 25 psi. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go and burn some weeds. Oh. 
Although it is kind of fun, the method here isn't to incinerate the weeds completely on the first pass. A relatively quick blast is all you need to stop the sap rising and kill off any growth above ground. This method is quicker and therefore more economical on fuel. You can see here that I'm moving at a slow walking pace while moving the flamethrower from side to side to ensure that I cover the complete path. Try not to linger at the sides to avoid scorching the edges of your lawn or your flower beds. You see here in the close-up that the hot flame is a clean burn and leaves no residue on the gravel. And here is the same area the next day after a quick second burn, nice and tidy and not a weed in sight. Okay, <laughs> so that was a really easy start there, just on the paths around my house, but this road coming up to my vegetable garden has got pretty overgrown, so let's try it on some more hardcore weeds here. One thing I'm going to do before I get going again is, as we said, our operating pressure is uh, around 25 psi, and as you use your flame gun, the pressure will slowly drop, so I'm just going to give it a couple of pumps to get it back up to pressure. So again we can see I'm using the same slow walking pace even though we have much larger weeds. You can see behind me that the leaves are quickly wilting and drying off. On a sunny day this growth will wither and dry very quickly. You can see we have some large perennial weeds here which will come up again but with a few repeated treatments you will finally starve the roots of nutrients and they'll eventually die off. Remember that while the initial treatment may take some time, the subsequent passes can be done very quickly as the new growth will be less each time. And here's the area the next day looking a lot cleaner. This was a very weedy patch as you saw so it does look a bit like a rocket was launched here but after a couple of days of rain any scorch marks will wash out. Okay, let's go back inside and wrap this up with a few maintenance tips. Okay, so we're back in the polytunnel. The sun has come out and we're with our brand new Sheen flame gun again. I'm just going to go through some maintenance tips just to keep one of these in tip-top order. So each one comes with a little pack like this. It has your instructions. Do read them, obviously. And then also we have our jet cleaning tool which is basically a little pin prick um, tool there. And this orange one then is the jet removal tool. So every time you use your sheen, it's a good practice just to make sure your jet is good and clean. And you do that by putting your um, jet cleaning tool in, you're poking it into the hole just at the end of the jet uh, and making sure it's clean. A couple of um, pokes and then that should be fine. I would also recommend maybe every four or five times you use it, just take the jet out uh, and um, if it needs some extra cleaning, uh, sometimes it's good to uh, soak it in some clean paraffin um, just to make sure it's nice and clean. So I'm just unscrewing it here. The, the tool is just a, it's just a square fitting on a little brass jet inside and that's coming out now. There we go. And we have it in the end of the tool there. So you can see there, uh, it's a very simple thing. There's not a lot to it. It's a brass fitting with a little hole in it and that's all we're making sure is clean. Sometimes if you're using dirty uh, kerosene, it can get clogged up in the back and that's why taking it out, um, uh, it's good practice every now and then uh, just to give it a clean. So then the only other thing to do then is um, just lubricating the pump at the back then. So just to prolong the life of it, I'm just gonna open it here and I'm just gonna show you unscrew that and it's just like a bicycle pump really but it has a little rubber seal here and that has to seal against the walls of the inside of the pump and if it's not lubricated it can wear quicker and you're going to have to get a new one so what I do is and what you should do is any light oil this is just a little capful it's actually two stroke oil I have here and I'm literally just running uh, a little smear of it around the edge of the washer and fitting it back into the uh, into the body of the flame gun there, just tightening that up. And you'll notice actually when you do that that it will pump a lot better as well. It seals better uh, 
and you're able to pump up pressure quicker. So um, really those two things. Other than that, it's a very, very simple bit of kit. But even if anything else did go wrong, um, you can also buy a maintenance pack, which includes a wick. It includes the filter for in here. It includes the inner jet, the whole thing. So these maintenance packs, they can actually be used to uh, refurbish an old Sheen flame gun. These guys have been the same design, made in the same factory uh, since the 1950s. Nothing has changed, so uh, there is no way you're going to be stuck for parts. Well, once you get the hang of this, this is a simple tool to use. I can do fairly quick weeding without putting on any masks or protective gear, and if I'm totally honest, it's kind of fun to use. Are weeds going to stay down as long as if I use a chemical weed killer? Well, with annual weeds, I would say yes, but with perennial weeds, probably not. You will need a couple of repeat treatments, but we don't have any chemicals going into the soil, nor do we have any leaching into the water courses. So in my opinion, uh, this is probably a better solution for me. Well, that's about it for the quick crop garden today. Remember everything you see in the video, apart from me, but including the Sheen X300 flame gun, all available on our websites, quickcrop.ie and quickcrop.co.uk. I look forward to seeing you again in the quick crop garden very soon.